guys, welcome to another episode of The Pescatarian and the Pig. Today I have my friend Liz with me, and she's going to show us how to make Easter houses. These Easter houses are like a gingerbread house, but they're made out of sugar cookies, and they're made for the event of Easter. So let us know how you make these, Liz. It's very easy, and you can do it in a day. And my kids love to do this every year, and they usually want to make about four or five, but I digress. So what I do is I go online, I cut out a template, and this is their basic pattern. It's a three-piece pattern, and what I end up doing is I cut two each of the sides, the gabled sides, the regular sides, and the roof, but just use one pattern. So what I usually buy is either the log of cookie dough or the take-and-bake ones, and typically when you're using this type of a cookie dough, it's much quicker and it's more consistent. What you'll need to do is you'll need to take the dough and <laughs> plop it all on the thing. You're going to need to add. Try not to eat them. Yeah, don't eat the raw cookie dough because they say you don't, but sometimes I do <laughs> because I don't listen to. And then what I do is I like to break it pretty much in half and you're going to need to add a lot of flour to it so that I'm you can work this. with it. And what I do is I just plop a hunk of flour right on my mat. And this is so nice because it's store-bought cookie dough. You don't have to go through any of the effort of creating your own cookie dough. You just have to roll some flour into it and make it a little bit harder. Right. Make it more of a cookie cutter type dough. Otherwise it gets too sticky and then your templates won't come off and it, it's just not pretty. So I usually just make a little bit of a flat ball and or a disc and work the flour that's on each side into it and then I do that again. I like it, it feels good. That's not good, it feels like played out when you were little. It's nice and cool. So you just coat it both sides and then you work the flour into the dough. So this is about the consistency that I want. It's not sticky at all. It's um, still cool to the touch because you leave it in the fridge right before you knead it, you pull it out because you want it to stay cold. And then I will slide over the flour to the corner and then roll it into a little bit of a disc, kind of flatten it out. Because I'm going to use my gable side, I'm going to just sort of... It's one of my favorite templates to use, and it's just easy to use. Now see how that's sticking? I let it fall back down, pick up some flour, add it, reflower my pin, and... Start getting the dough out. And I always do it on my sill pads just because then I can just scoop the cookie tray, cookie tray under the sill pad and plop it in the oven. And then I like to make them about a quarter of an inch thick. And what ends up happening is it just it creates more of a sturdier house. So after I've rolled it out a little bit, I'm just going to eat this one yeah. while you're <laughs> And then get salmonella. Um, I place my template on the cookie dough. Um, what I like to use is a pastry cutter. If you have like a large knife, you can use a large knife. But this is what you cannot do. You cannot plop it down and drag it through the cookie dough because the cookie dough will come following after. So what you need to do, whether it's a knife or a pastry cutter, you gently Go along the edges of your template, press down, pick up, and then that bit can be taken away. That way it doesn't really pull on the dough underneath the template. And you could use the reserve cookie dough that's left over and you could use cookie cutters mm -hmm. and make extra little embellishments for your, for your Easter house and the garden surrounding it. Yes. That's the fun part, the garden surrounding bunnies it. Bunnies and flowers. Take the template off. And then what I do is I grab my cookie sheet, and like I said, and I slide it under, and then you need to I let this, the flour. yeah, what I do is I let that side hang off, and I kind of brush it onto the counter. Make a mess of your counter. Yeah, because why not? We're making cookie dough <laughs> houses. Okay, and there's my little bit, little one gable. Make one more of those, and then the other template bits, and you bake. The
cookie dough tends to sort of smush all over the sheet. So what you want to do is go back and cut the template again and do it the same way. You so that while it's still a little bit hot. Yeah, while it's still hot. Let it pull it out of the oven, let it sit a few seconds, maybe five, ten seconds, and then go along the lines of your template and just plop it down. Sometimes the template slips around, but plop it down, lift up, plop it down. Oh, it smells so Oh, it does it smell awesome. so good. There's no calories in this. <laughs> calorie free yes. sugar cookie house. Yes. Calorie free, sugar free, calorie free. I told you I was bringing you something special. Now, <laughs> your little piece matches the template perfectly. So, what you want to do is just pull away the pieces and then let that cool. Alrighty. So, what are we going to do now? Well, this is my absolute favorite recipe for royal icing. There are so many recipes out there with glycerin and just egg whites and whatnot, but the secret ingredient that I use. It's not really a secret, but it's my favorite, is cream of tartar. And all you have to do is you have to put a half teaspoon of cream of tartar. Super easy. And I, I'm not particular on the, <laughs> the measurements. The measurements, because you know, it doesn't really matter. And then, and then three egg whites. And I always get the real fresh brown eggs. It just seems like they work better their shells are better i don't know i'm just like that i like okay so there are my egg whites so it's half a teaspoon of cream of tartar cream of tartar tartar steak tartar and then four cups of confectionery sugar gently but you just pour them all in oh once. yeah all at once and then you start your mixer oh, i'm gonna raise it you start your mixer on low just to incorporate all the ingredients and what I like to do is scrape down the sides while it's mixing. Just the speed. It'll get there in about seven minutes. So this is the consistency that you need to have it. It's a glossy, stiff frosting. Way thicker than much thicker. Then you would put like a, a regular I kind of want to eat it. Baking frosting. You can taste it, but it's not gonna taste good. I can't taste it. If you want the frosting to taste good, you can add some lemon extract. There's plenty of sugar in there, but the lemon extract or the almond extract will cut that sort of bitterness on the cream of tartar. So here we are at the part that these are the pieces that I baked yesterday. And what I like to do is if sometimes if you feel like your cookie is too thin or you just want to be safe and not have any bits break off, I do a nice kind of layer of the royal icing on the backs so that it will just make it sturdier. And I did that to all the pieces yesterday. And then all you do is you flip it over. You let it dry first. Oh yeah, you let it dry for probably seven to 10, if longer, if you do it thick, 15 to 20 minutes. And it will harden. Um, I like to leave mine overnight if I have the time, but if you don't, it's no big deal. And then you flip it over and you get to start decorating with all our candy. Now what are we doing? We're going to make piping bags? Yes. If you don't have your own, which I ran out of at Christmas and forgot to replace them. My kids love to use the Ziploc bags. I buy the freezer ones because they have the double zip and they are a lot sturdier and they won't pop if the kids squeeze them too hard. So these are really good sturdy ones. And all you do is take a clump of your royal icing and you plop it in your bag down to the one corner. You can always refill it if you want. Or get another bag. You don't want to get your fingers dirty. Which, when I do this, I end up getting it all over me just because I don't really care. So, and then you want to, if you get any on the edge, you just wipe it off. It's no big deal. And then you make sure you ziplock it. Try and get as much air out of it as you can. And ziplock it nice and tight. 
and then you squeeze it all down to one. And then all you do is, depending upon how thick you want to make your ribbons or your uh, decorating dots for the pieces of candy to hit, you just take off a little tiny bit and voila, there is your icing bag. Nice. And you can stick your candy on. So here are my little tricks of the trade since I've been doing this for, since 1985. Um, Way to date yourself there, Liz. Yeah, well, hey, you weren't <laughs> even born, so whatever. Um, it's when I met Mike and we were, I was oh. making him gingerbread houses every Christmas. <laughs> um, anywho, so these are my tricks to be able to put the bits together and we'll just pretend, again, I put this on the back to strengthen it. We'll pretend these are decorated and I buttress the pieces with different various bowls, cups, glassware, but what I normally like to do first, I'll put some frosting on the bits that are gonna attach, and I like to do a lot. So now we already have our pieces that we just decorated. Yay! <laughs> and then I will take a glass to hold this piece up. Yeah, they, sometimes they fall off. It, I normally let them dry a lot longer. <laughs> so I've put the glue the mortar on the side piece. I'll hold this piece in place and just gently kind of glop it in there. And then what I like to do is buttress this with a mug. And then I do the same with this piece. And I sort of just run it over, up and down. And I put another mug on that piece. That's what we've done so far today. So you already have one, she already has one pre-made that you made last night, right? Yeah. So Would let's, you like to see it? let's go take a look at okay. that. So this is your complete house, right? Yes, super <laughs> easy and the grass that I showed you earlier, this is that edible grass, so you can literally eat everything on it. And this is, she's done a really cool job on the roof here. She um, actually created little patterns with the sanding sugar. Tried to do a little Easter plaid, you know, plaid's big. And then this nice little diagonal. <laughs> it looks really cool yeah. though. It's really cute. And my kids just, have fun walking by and picking off the eggs and the bits of candy yeah, that are just plop, literally plopped on the mat that I've... Um, and of course, somebody came and nibbled the ears off the bunny. I wonder who. <laughs> and then you can just pull everything off and eat it. And the cookie is pretty good too. Okay, well thank you for coming by the Pescatarian and the Pig for another little project that you can do. Um, make sure you check out more recipes at www.thepescatarianofthepig.com. Thanks!